So Conan is a character that never quite reached her potential in Naruto, in my opinion. Even though she was an Akatsuki member, when you think about the Akatsuki, she is probably the last character that comes to your mind. And I just think that's kind of a shame, because her powers are very cool in her design, and also the design of her powers, how those papers look around her, and those wings as well, she's just very cool. Like and subscribe if you think Conan looks cool, and also you have to help me out, you know, with the YouTube algorithm and all that, it's a war, and we have to win it. I can't really say she has a great personality or a very developed character or motivations and stuff like that because she doesn't appear much. Everything she does is very much related to Nagato and Yahiko to a certain extent, so she doesn't have a lot of agency to be honest. Every time she shows up she is also very much overshadowed by pain, which also doesn't really help her because the fights she gets are usually very brief and pain Kane's fights are much more important in the narrative than her fights. As Naruto is a shonen anime slash manga, fights are what actually develop the characters, and if she doesn't get very good fights, then yeah, she's not gonna be a very memorable developed character like most of the Akatsuki members. Even Sasori, who died in his first fight we got to see, is much more remembered and maybe liked than Conan, even though Conan stayed alive up until episode 200 and whatever in Shippuden, and Sasori died really early. Of course, Conan was introduced later than Sasori, because, to be honest, Conan and Pain were the last duo in the Akatsuki to be introduced to the audience, but even so, the fights she had weren't the best. I mean, they weren't boring by any means, but they weren't the most memorable, for the most part. The first time we get to see her fighting is that brief scuffle she has with Jiraiya before Jiraiya fights pain, and it is kind of interesting, it's very intense, but it's also very brief. She imprisons the guy Jiraiya is possessing with her papers, then Jiraiya comes out of his shadow, shoots a fireball at Conan, Conan shoots her papers back and they have the clash, and then Conan shoots more papers, Jiraiya dodges, tosses some oil on her, and then wraps her with his hair, and that's the fight. It's a very intense and cool looking exchange, but it's a minute long, it's not much at all, and then Pain shows up, and of course, Conan's fight is completely overshadowed by Pain's fight. Nobody even remembers Conan fought Jiraiya, but she did. She is always under the shadow of Pain. The next time we got to see her fighting was when Pain invaded Konoha, trying to capture Naruto and all that, and, uh, well, she is in the reconnaissance squad, she is supposed to go get information about where Naruto is in Konoha. She is not successful. Sure, she does fight some people, it's implied that she fought the Yaburame clan, but we never get to see that, she just shows up there, makes some clones, and we never get to see her clashing. It would be cool to see her fighting Shino, though I think there were better characters to pair her up against in that particular arc. If you're interested to see what I'll do in that arc, and with Conan as well, definitely go check my Naruto rewrite. It's a series of videos I make rewriting the entire Naruto series. I haven't gotten to that part yet, but I'll eventually will, and uh, it's definitely gonna be different. So if you're interested, check it out, link in the description. After Konoha's invasion arc, Conan is redeemed alongside Nagato. Not even redeemed, she just goes along with whatever Nagato says because she straight up says, yeah, I'm gonna follow Nagato. That's what I mean, she doesn't really have a lot of agency, which doesn't make her as compelling as most of the Akatsuki members because they all have a lot of agency, they have personality. Conan, even though she looks very cool, she doesn't have a lot of personality, which is kind of disappointing, she's kind of a blank slate. But she goes back to the rain village, now a good girl, and then she fights Obito. That is by far her best fight. It's a really good fight, it's a flashed out fight, and she pulls off one of the craziest moves in Naruto with that sea of paper bombs, like 600 billion paper bombs, I think that's the number. It's absolutely insane, and she forces Obito to use Izanagi to escape from it, which is something not everyone could do. Almost no one would be able to force Obito to use Izanagi with all the prep time in the world. 
People say, oh yeah, it's just prep time, man, nobody cares, it doesn't really count for her strength or anything, it's with prep time. But tell me how many characters would be able to create something as powerful as that with all prep time in the world. That speaks volumes to her power, man. That sea of paper bombs is pretty damn strong. And it's also very cool. I don't mind the way she died, I think it's actually a really good way to send the character off. That poetic moment of her bloody paper floating to cover their faces in that old safe house they had in the past when Jiraiya was their sensei, that was all very well done. And I don't really mind Obito using Izanagi and killing her, I think it's fair, I think it's a cool moment for Obito as well, because we kind of thought he was Madara, and she was like, oh, at least Madara is dead, and then he comes from behind and stabs her and kills her, and a lot of people just say, oh man, she's so stupid, why wouldn't she just destroy Nagato's eyes, man, if she destroyed Nagato's Renegon, everything would have been avoided, and y you're right, but... Nagato was a very good friend of Conan, she would never desecrate his body, she made that entire tomb for him with all those flowers made of her paper and Yahiko as well, so she would never do anything to tarnish Nagato's eyes. She was also very proud of Nagato's eyes, she said the rain village is the land where the Renegon awakened. Of course, that was not really the case, because Madara implanted the Rinnegan in Nagato, but she thought that Nagato awakened the Rinnegan by himself. Even though it's not the case, it's something she was proud of, she would never destroy the Rinnegan. Maybe if she knew what the Rinnegan could do, then yeah, she would probably do it, because you know, it's better to save the world than to, you know, just have your friend's body be desecrated, but she didn't really know what he was going to do. I don't think they were aware of the Eye of the Moon plan, because Pain's plan was to essentially get all the tail beasts so they could just have the power into the ghetto Mazo and use it to nuke whatever cities they pleased and maintain peace in the world through fear and pain. It was very different from the Eye of the Moon plan, so Conan was probably following Pain's plan because she followed everything Pain slash Nagato did. It wouldn't be wise for Obito to be telling them about his real plans because otherwise they wouldn't really cooperate, would they? Up until the very end, Conan thought the Akatsuki was something Nagato created. Sure, the initial thought of the Akatsuki was something created by Nagato slash Yahiko, but Obito became the leader of the Akatsuki and changed their goals completely. He manipulated Nagato and Conan as well by proxy, and that's essentially the downfall of the character. I think she's an interesting character. I just think they should have added a little bit more personality to her. They should have given her a couple more interesting fights against cool characters as well. That would have made the character much more memorable and a better character too. Also, they didn't bring her back in the war. Kabuto never resurrected her through Edo Tensei, and let's be real, Obito stabbed her with his rod. They had plenty of DNA from Conan to bring her back. I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, Obito was kind of in favor of using the Edo Tensei. He was like, okay, this could be a good thing. And including Conan, if Obito just went to Kabuto, like, okay, here's the blood from an Akatsuki member. I think you should use it in your Edo Tensei. I mean, I mean, what's one more? It's not really gonna make that much of a difference for me if I have to deal with Kabuto, but it's probably gonna help a lot in the battlefield, and it could also be a good opportunity for Kunan to get some more development and fight some more interesting characters along the way. The same thing goes for Kisame. For whatever reason, they decided not to bring Kisame back, maybe because they didn't have DNA, because sure, Kisame died in that island, and they probably couldn't really get to him very easily, but do you really think Kabuto or Orochimaru or even Obito wouldn't have access to some of Kisame's DNA? Why wouldn't they just bring him back? I don't know. Maybe Kishimoto didn't want to clutter the war arc some more, but uh, there were characters in the Edo Tensei that weren't really necessary, and um, I would have preferred Conan and Kisame over them. I think Conan could have been a better character, and also Kishimoto is not really well known for writing good female characters. It's kind of a meme, actually. Comment below what you think about it, subscribe to this video, and like it as well. Please do so. Thank you. Thanks for watching.